So over the past week, Las Vegas hosted the first ever HumanX AI conference, a gathering of top tier minds in tech, economics and governance. And while there were plenty of expected insights, one idea came out of left field. AI, they said, might actually be deflationary, meaning the value of money could start going up, not down. That sounds insane when inflation is still hanging at 2.8% in the US and everyone's talking about rising costs, but some of the smartest people in the industry now believe AI could reverse that trend entirely. In recent developments, this could be extremely welcomed. Policies of today have radically shaped the cost for consumers and businesses alike. Economists weighed in on this as well, stating how there could be a recession before summer. We'll break that down but first, we need to understand the bigger picture of what this conference revealed. Because the case for AI-driven deflation doesn't come out of nowhere. It builds through strategy, through economics, and through a redefinition of work itself. Let's start with how companies are thinking about AI integration. Arvind Jain, CEO of Glean, gave one of the more grounded takes. His point? Most businesses are rushing into AI with dollar signs in their eyes, and that's a mistake. Make small bets, he said. Don't focus on immediate ROI. Focus on education first. It's not sexy, but it's smart. Jane's take reframes AI as something that requires infrastructure before payoff. You don't just plug it in and print cash. He recommends three simple steps. Create dedicated AI teams. Build a strategic roadmap for implementation. Prioritize workforce education over cost cutting. That third point matters more than people realize because every new wave of technology creates fear. Fear of being replaced, fear of being left behind. But Jane's approach implies a shift in how companies can scale with AI without burning out their people or culture. And here's where the first signal of deflation starts to show itself. If companies can become dramatically more efficient without hiring more people, what happens to cost structures? What happens to productivity metrics? What happens to the unit economics of delivering products and services? You guessed it, they improve fast. Which brings us to another speaker, Tuhin Srivastava, CEO of Basetan. He brought up something the startup world's been buzzing about, AI startup valuations. In 2021, during the height of AI mania, companies with just $1 million in annual revenue were raising at billion-dollar valuations. That kind of speculation feels familiar. Dot-com bubble levels of hype. But Srivastava argues this time might be different. Today's AI companies aren't just betting on the future. Many are already profitable. They're shipping products, onboarding customers, and generating actual revenue. The result? A more legitimate layer of tech companies built on solving real problems, not just pitching vague ideas. And here's where the loop continues. Because the moment these companies start deploying their tools into legacy sectors, healthcare, logistics, manufacturing, costs drop, speed increases, and services become more accessible. Think about it. What happens when AI drastically cuts the price of diagnostics? Or when warehouse robotics make shipping 50% faster? The economics of entire industries start compressing downward. That's not inflation, that's the opposite. JPM CEO Jamie Dimon stated in a letter to shareholders, he economy is facing considerable turbulence, including geopolitics and we are likely to see inflationary outcomes. Whether or not the menu of tariffs causes a recession remains in question, but it will slow down growth. While also stating the risk of recession rising from 40% to 60%, with the prospect of policy change raising prices for consumers and causing a contraction in global trade. So this couldn't have come at a better time. Now let's shift to how AI is reshaping roles. Andrew Filev put it bluntly, as AI makes it easier to code and vibe code, we should expect to see a new wave of product engineers. It sounds like a trendy job title, but it actually reveals something deeper. Product engineers aren't traditional coders or managers. They're hybrids, people who can dream up a product and build it themselves. All thanks to A, I writing the boilerplate code, debugging errors, and optimizing logic on the fly. So here's the question. If software creation becomes accessible to millions more people, if a teenager in their bedroom can build what once required a team of five developers, what does that do to salaries, to dev teams, to the economics of software itself? Answer, 
it drops the cost everywhere. And when cost drops in sector after sector, we're not just looking at disruption, we're looking at deflation through abundance. This is the engine behind Sam Altman's entire thesis. When he spoke at the conference, he didn't focus on AGI or the fear narrative. He said something more dangerous. AI, Altman said, will likely have a deflationary impact on the global economy, a consequence that is underappreciated and misunderstood by many. Translation, AI isn't just changing how we work, it's changing the value of money itself. In Altman's view, this is not deflation from economic weakness, like we've seen in recessions or depressions. It's the opposite. This is deflation from hyper-efficiency. AI slashes production costs, reduces the need for labor in repetitive roles, speeds up delivery cycles, and most importantly, it scales knowledge work, not just physical labor. Let's play it out. A hospital uses AI to analyze scans 10 times faster. Diagnoses become cheaper. Insurance payouts shrink. Preventative care gets better. Fewer surgeries, lower costs. A school system adopts AI tutors that personalize lessons for every student. Suddenly, private education level quality is available at public school prices. Again, costs drop. A startup uses AI agents to run 80% of its back-end operations. No HR team, no accounting department, just lean systems that outperform bloated incumbents. Now multiply that across industries. It's not hard to imagine a future where services that once cost $1,000 now cost $50. Where quality doesn't go down, but prices do. That's Altman's thesis. That's the deflation loop. And if you're entrepreneurial, this is the moment you need to be paying attention. Because where others see price drops, founders see market openings. If you're building, scaling or investing, this isn't a warning, this is a map. Want to sell software? Price it like it's already in a deflationary economy. Want to build a service business? Make it AI augmented from day one. Want to invest? Look for companies that aren't just using AI, but are redefining cost structures with it. This is the edge, but it's not all upside. Navrina Singh, founder of Credo AI, warned that we can't afford to confuse governance with regulation. She asked, do you have a handle on your AI systems? How do you mitigate the risks associated with them? How do you future-proof your AI, not just at the company level, but at the government level? Because if AI is now controlling how goods are priced, how companies operate, how labor is allocated. What happens if no one's watching the code? Black box decision making at scale isn't just risky, it's existential. Governments aren't built for real-time policy changes, but AI evolves in weeks, not years. If we don't build transparent, auditable frameworks now, the market could enter a feedback loop where AI-driven decisions reinforce biases, deepen inequality, and distort incentives, even while prices are dropping. Cheap doesn't always mean good, and fast doesn't always mean fair. The question becomes, can society keep up with the very thing making it more efficient? If we don't, the benefits of AI-driven deflation might be concentrated in the hands of a few, while the rest are priced out of ownership entirely. And that brings us full circle. Because yes, AI might cause deflation. Yes, services might become cheaper, faster and smarter. Yes, it might unlock abundance. But abundance without access becomes illusion. So we're left with a choice. Will we use this deflationary power to democratize opportunity, to build companies that scale access instead of scarcity, to raise the floor instead of just lifting the ceiling? Or will we create a future where the only ones who benefit are those who moved early, automated fast, and locked the rest of the world out? The answer hasn't been written yet, but the code is already running. And if AI is going to redefine the value of money, we better make sure we define what it means to win. Because this time, inflation isn't the problem. Complacency is. Time will tell as all of this is fresh with lots of room to play out. What are your thoughts on AI becoming deflationary? Do you think that's a good thing for the world? Let us know in the comments below. As always, feel free to check out this video to learn more about AI in the ever-changing rapid development landscape. Our goal is to bring as many people along for the ride as possible. So if you're someone who wants, doesn't want to be left behind in AI's development, subscribe and leave a like so others can learn too. With that all said and done, everyone, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.